sideline reporter David Aldridge. I'm Kevin Harlan. And Mike, these fans are in a raucous mood tonight, looking to will their Bulls to a win. Yeah, a bit of a mixed blessing. Great to enjoy more of the championship round, but they might have preferred to see this series wrap up back in Seattle. And the once unbeatable Bulls suddenly seeming very vulnerable. Clark wrecked by injuries and inconsistent play from their supporting cast. A lot falling on the shoulders of Michael Jordan. You're right, Kevin, and Michael Jordan is facing the double and triple teams, not to mention the reigning defensive player of the year and Gary Payton. MJ definitely is looking for more help, but he also knows he might have to do it himself. That is going to be a battle to watch for sure. On the floor for the Supersonics, the defensive player of the year, Gary Payton. He's joined by Hawkins in the backcourt. At the forward spots, Shrimp and Kemp. And Brokowski at the five. And the 5 for Chicago. MVP Michael Jordan and Harper are the guards. Pippen and Rodman form the front court, And big Luke Longley at center. And after the Sonics lost the first three games, Coach Carl finally put the glove, Gary Payton, on Jordan. Some question what took him so long to guard the MVP with the defensive player of the year. Right on the bucket. Jordan picking up right where he left off from last game, making his presence felt early. Jordan's gone a perfect three for three so far. And the Sonics refusing to go quietly. And for more on that, let's bring in David Alden. Well, thanks very much. After Chicago's 22-point Game 3 win gave the Bulls a 3-0 lead, everyone from reporters to even some Seattle players thought this series was over. That is, everyone but Sean Kemp, the All-Star forward, challenged his teammates between Games 3 and 4. Kemp delivered. Back-to-back double-doubles from the Rain Man have brought us back to Game 6. Kevin? He's been terrific. David, thank you. I'll be honest, Mike. I didn't think Seattle would push the 72-win Bulls to a game six. Did you? Me either. Obviously, the Supersonics are giant underdogs. They need Kemp to do the impossible again. Outplay Michael Jordan like he did in game four and five. Deft touch on the alley-oop. Really love watching Peyton dish it out like that. He's a true floor general who does an outstanding job of getting his teammates to clean looks. Hey, Clark, you look at the last two games for Michael Jordan. His numbers have gone down since he's been defended by Gary Payton. Yeah, you know, through the first three games, Kevin, he averaged 31 points on 46% shooting. Since then, though, only 24 points on 41% shooting. That's a significant difference. Yeah, Payton's done a great job. With injuries to his back, both ankles, <laughs> and knee, I think I've covered all bases. Uh, this Clark has been a very tough series for Scotty Pippen. No doubt about it, Kevin. I mean, he's shooting 32% from the field and just 18% from the three-point line. We know he's not anywhere close to 100%, but let's see if he can still find something extra tonight, digging deep, because the Bulls need somebody other than Michael Jordan to step up. Indeed they do. Excellent point. And it's Burkowski missing. Dennis Rodman was a huge free agent signing for the Bulls adding toughness and rebounding to this squad. Yeah, I agree with you wholeheartedly there. You know, it's the fifth straight year the Worm has led the league in boards. He does an awful lot to stir the drink defensively for Chicago, and the fans absolutely love it. Catching up now on the changes for Chicago. Wennington comes in for Luke Longley, and Steve Kerr is subbed in for Ron Harper. And a change for the Sonics. Sam Perkins, he's checked in for Burkowski. Now, here's Peyton. Still looking for his first bucket in this one. Kicks it out to Hawkins. From deep. And it's Chicago with the rebound. At one point during game five in Seattle, the Bulls might miss 20 consecutive three-point shots. From deep, Pippen was one for eight. Steve Kerr one for seven from the three-point line. The team was three for 26 for the game. Those numbers have to be better tonight. They've got to improve in that category. Here's Peyton following the basket by Michael Jordan. And Kemp slams it in. Well, Sean Kemp was outstanding in game five. Somehow, the Rain Man played with a bruised sternum the entire second half. One of the few Sonics playing through the paint tonight. Here's Wennington. 
and three from Jordan. Percy Hawkins with the rebound. That one doesn't go. Good work defensively by Rodman. Jordan with it. Started by Kemp. And the Bulls tack on two more. Boy, he's playing out of his head. Nailing everything. And the defense is scrambling to try to stop him right now. And so far, no go. Here is Hawkins. Now, here's Peyton. Here's Shrimp. Offline with his three. Jordan in the corner. Over Shrimp. And there's Michael Jordan, the assist by Pippen. 18 points for Michael Jordan. Well, you want the ball in his hands. A real good offensive play. And so it's Michael Jordan making things happen for the Bulls. You're going on an absolute rampage, piling in the points. He kicked into the pace of the entire quarter. We'll get right back to the action when we return. It's the second quarter of Game 6, the 1996 NBA Final. Seattle trying to extend this series. The Bulls looking to put the finishing touches on an all-time season. Chicago leading by nine. It is clearly an emotional night for Michael Jordan. Playing on Father's Day without his late dad. They've got Pippen. Michael Jordan is out there with Harper. Then it's long, and it's Rodman in at the four spot. So that's the five in the game for Chicago. Looking to stretch this lead out even further, going right after his shot. And the defense continues to not be up to the challenge. They double-team Kemp. Stolen by Rodman. Offside Pippen. Puts up a three. And Michael Jordan with the three. Jordan's got the lead up to 14 now for the Bulls. And really for Michael Jordan, so much has happened since he lost his father, Mike Fratello. Well, first retiring, trying out pro baseball, coming back to the NBA, winning an MVP. The one thing left, win the title. And you know Michael Jordan is thinking about his dad today. Yeah, he's got to be. Mike still a lot of basketball left, but much better from deep for Chicago in this one. Hitting threes will pay dividends later on. Making those trays will loosen up a stiff Seattle defense. Trail by 16. The feed now to Kemp. The pass to Perkins. And finished off by Perkins. Well, when Perkins has the ball in that situation, Sam knows how to finish. Second quarter of basketball, just over a minute and a half played so far. Jordan passes to Longley. Two free throws coming up, and they call the shooting foul. Ah, Clark, Scotty Pippen is having a hard time out there tonight, isn't he? Yeah, he really is, Kevin. And, you know, those injuries really taking a toll as a result. Pippen just has not been himself throughout this series. First free throw is good. And every team would like to have a player like Longley. He's an unassuming guy who plays to his strengths and does what's best for his team. Old free throw is good from Longley. Now Peyton. He's been quiet so far. Still no points in the game. Shrimp a screen on Harper. And they double up Peyton. And he lobs it up toward the rim and slam dunk by Kemp. On fire so far to start game six. Kemp looking to lead this team for at least one more game. Chicago leading by 14. And Mike, as we can see here, a clear advantage for Michael Jordan over Sean Kemp thus far. MJ wants this series to end tonight. This year's MVP wants another ring. Kemp really needs to step his game up to extend this series. He's going to have to be at his very best. You're right. For Jordan, into the second quarter, Mike, the shooting numbers are better than what we saw in Seattle. Well, some adjustments from Mike. Freeing himself up for some better looks. Sure. Looking sure. like the league MVP tonight. He does. This is what Kemp's game is all about. Athletic interior play to find points. Hawkins with it. He's picked up by Jordan. Pass to Peyton. Let's it go from deep. 
Sonic's having flashbacks, still struggling in this series and not looking sharp. Rodman kicks to George. Back to Rodman. Good, and the assist goes to Jordan. And the Bulls lead by 14. And Rodman, a solid inside score. Picks his spots well and uses his body well, too. The main story in the newspapers this morning, the future of this Bulls team. Michael Jordan, Dennis Rodman, Phil Jackson are all free agents. Putting it down with some power. Wow, a true rim rattler. Yeah, going up strong with both hands. Not just an NBA title on the line for the Bulls, also a place in history. GA. Thanks, guys. If the Bulls win tonight, they could go down as the greatest team of all time. Chicago's already set an NBA single season record with 72 regular season wins. And including the playoffs, they're 48 and 2 at home. But we've seen over these last two games that the weight of history has been heavy on their shoulders. Back to you. You can see it. All right, D.A., thank you. Czar, just how much pressure is right now on this Bulls team? A ton. Mm. And it's been this way since they started chasing this wins record midway through the regular season. Chicago looks a little tired. It's been a long season. Very long indeed. Here's Peyton. After Chicago, picking up a basket just moments ago. And it's slammed in by Perkins. You know, usually Kemp's passing game is low-key overlooked, but this is a quality feed here. Harper the pass to Jordan. Back to Harper. Uses the glass to finish the lane. Harper's got his first points in this one. Found the crease, took advantage, and got it in close. An edge to this lead. They're having their way. About three seconds between shot and game clock. Peyton looking around. Here's Shrimp. Had a chance there to cut it to single digits, but it's off target. Outside, Jordan. With two seconds left. Longley with the bucket. Longley's got eight points here in this quarter. He's got a big body, we know that. But Longley has an underrated skill set, too. And so it's Chicago, sitting with a comfortable lead up by 14. And their ability to get points in the paint has made all the difference in this one. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. The elevated tracks of Chicago. The L zipping through downtown Chicago on Father's Day as we get set for the second half. Game six of the NBA Finals. It's the second half along with coach Mike Fratello, former player Clark Kellogg, and reporter David Aldridge. This is Kevin Harlan. The Bulls hoping to hoist the Larry O'Brien Trophy tonight. And so it's Pippen with it. He brings it up for the Bulls. Things have come full circle for Dennis Rodman. Remember, the worm was on those bad boys Pistons team that eliminated the Bulls three straight years. The second half is underway, and here's who George Carl's got on the floor. Hawkins is out there with Gary Payton. Then it's Brokowski. Then it's Kemp. And it's Shrimp in at the three spot. So it's the Supersonics now after the Bulls pick up two. And after battling Chicago for years, Clark, the NBA's rebounding leader, Dennis Rodman, now joining the Bulls. You know, he was brought in as the final piece of the championship puzzle, Kevin. So far, so good. Rodman looking to earn his third ring. In the first half, Mike, a much more effective Michael Jordan than game five. We know Michael was going to review the film with Phil Jackson. And what they've done is draw up some very nice sets for MJ. Now here's Jordan. 18 points separating the teams. That's the biggest lead of the game. And out of bounds as the Sonics gain possession. And here in the second half of play, we're just over a minute in. Trying to find a way out of this rut, Mike. Yeah, looking to regain some momentum offensively. Kemp. Rodman with the defensive effort. You expect to get two points there. A little unlucky for them. And it's Pippen in the corner. Let's it go with a three. And it's good. Assisting on the play was Jordan. 
Jordan's got assist number seven for him tonight. How well, Mike compared to game five, they had a massive improvement in this three-point shooting. And that really helps open up the driving lanes. It specifically gives Jordan more space. You know, Devin LaFrent moves so well and is so skilled, you forget sometimes that he is 6'10". They're reminding everybody with that dunk. Another one falls for Chicago. I tell you, his vision has been outstanding in this one. Finding many opportunities to create for his team. This is how you run an offense, moving the ball and rewarding ready shooters. Now here's Peyton. He's gotten some minutes, but nothing on the board yet. Master Schrempf fires from deep. And it's Chicago with the rebound. Rodman's got rebound number seven for him tonight. Jordan down low. He's covered by Hawkins. And it goes down two points. And they have not let up. They are still in attack mode despite their sizable lead. And I like that mindset. Never let up. You don't want to give the opponent any opportunity to get back in this one. And another great look at the 2K drop. Taking the onus on himself to make something happen. Got it into the teeth of the D and made them pay. So the Bulls lead this series, Mike, three games to two, trying to cement themselves as one of the greatest teams ever. An NBA record, 72 wins in the regular season. But Chicago needs to close this series out to be considered the greatest. I agree. And perhaps the coach lit a fire under them at halftime because they have owned this third quarter. And it's important for them to keep it going. Can't show any signs of slowing down. Timeout is called. First of the game for the Supersonics. Changes for Chicago. Wellington he's checked in for long. Who coach comes in for Rodman? And Steve Kerr is subbed in for Harper. And then for Seattle. Sam Perkins. He's checked in for Brakowski. Ringate comes in for Shrimp. And McMillan subbed in for Hersey Hawkins. Three minutes gone now in the third quarter. Well, Seattle might even force a game six. That's very impressive. They were down 3 zip. The Sonics are massive underdogs. Just getting back to Chicago is a win for them. Yeah, Yeah, and Kemp is well known for his dunking ability. I mean, you have to keep him out of the paint or he's going to posterize you. Back to Pippen. And some nice ball movement here by Chicago. And here's Kerr from the arc. And it's Seattle with the rebound. With the chance to clinch the title tonight, Coach Fratello, Michael Jordan has been outstanding in the battle with Kemp. The Rain Man hasn't been able to keep up with Jordan. The last two games of the series, wins for Seattle, Kemp was able to win this showdown. That is not the case tonight. You said it. And so Peyton will bring it up for Seattle. We've got 108 left to play in the third. Perkins with the screen for Peyton. It's tipped. Stolen by Pippen. Old teammates in North Carolina. Sam Perkins and Michael Jordan won the national title with the Tar Heels back in 1982. That was Jordan's freshman year. MJ hitting the game-winning shot. Seattle with the ball. Here's McMillan. He's been patient so far. Nothing on the scoreboard yet. Here's Peyton. Lays it up and banks it in. Well, how about Gary Payton? Silky look working his way in close to the basket to make sure he got what he wanted in close. For three, Kerr gets the three-pointer to fall. Kerr's got himself going with the triple, his first basket of the game. Eight-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Peyton outside. There's 18 seconds left in the third quarter. Down to five on the shot clock. Passes it to Perkins. And the rejection by Pippen. 
Pippen putting in the work to get there for the denial. That was really a nice hustle play. Here's Kerr for three. And a great assist by Cooper as that one goes in. Well, they have been raining threes here in the second half. And when a team is locked in like this from outside, they become hard to beat. And so it's Chicago, having no problems at all. Uh, 29 points heading into the next quarter. The scoring has been tremendous, and they are shooting lights out with very high accuracy. And we've got more in 2K Sports coming your way after this break. This could be the final quarter of basketball this year. So far in these NBA Finals, Bulls are up three games to two. Chicago looking to close out a historic season. And it's the Supersonics with the ball. Going back to game five, Michael Jordan just two points in the fourth quarter. Normally that's when MJ takes over. Maybe Mike is human after all. The last time the Bulls won a title, Father's Day 1993. Again, Chicago can clinch on Father's Day right now, today. Right, David? Thank you, Kevin. Of course, this Father's Day is much different from Michael Jordan. Right after that victory three years ago in Phoenix, MJ lost his father, James. And he said before today's game, I'm looking forward to going out and playing hard, knowing that I'm doing what I can to try and make him proud. Guys? Yeah, interesting day, difficult day. D.A., thank you. And, Mike, things full circle for Jordan. His kids up in the stands tonight. Yeah, Michael's playing with a heavy heart, but told us before the game he's playing to make his children proud. Yeah, a lot of quality there for sure. So with Pippen sitting on the bench, this is Phil Jackson's lineup. We've got Bill Wennington. Tony Kukoc is out there with Bushley. Then there's Brown, and it's Jordan in at the two spot. Here's Snow. The pass to Wingate. Inside, six on the shot clock. Rakowski, good. He clocked that last game in Seattle. Why were the Sonics able to hold Jordan to two points in that fourth quarter? Well, first of all, Kevin, we never see that. Uh -uh. But you know, Jordan appeared to be tired to me. I mean, MJ was doing everything scoring-wise. Peyton was putting a lot of pressure on him. There's no doubt about it. We'll see a different Michael Jordan in this final frame. You can count on it. A strong finals performance, Mike, from Michael Jordan trying to secure his fourth NBA title. And his fourth finals MVP. Wow. There's no way you can keep Jordan down too long. Michael's just so good. Oh, I like that. It's a reverse jam. Oh, yeah. Look at the camera flashes popping up. Nicely done. And slam dunk by Jordan. One-handed, threw it down with power. Oh, he loves that move. An iconic one for him. Here's Snow. Johnson with a screen on Brown. Snow the pass to Wingate. Snow against Brown. Steps back and fires. Tries again. And there's the nice layup by Johnson. Johnson. Love the hustle there. Extending the possession, just generating offense. Here's Jordan driving inside. Banked in off the glass. Jordan's got 29 in the game. He's ready, willing, and able to carry the load offensively. To the paint. Here's Brakowski. And he takes it in for the layup off a very nice feed. Playing to his strength. Brakowski taking the shot he wants inside. They are in complete control, coach, of this game. There's no question, without a doubt, they've been firing on all cylinders. In every way, you're right. Nice, strong finish on that jam. Yeah, he went with two hands for safety. I get it. He made sure no one was stopping that rack attack. Here's Askew. That one, no good. Kukoc with the defensive effort. And we're about three and a half minutes into the fourth quarter. Well, I think he shot the ball well, guys, but I don't think he shot it enough. The more shots he gets from here on out, the more they'll stretch out this lead. 
Brown against Snow. There's the lob to the hoop. And it's going to be out of bounds. The Bulls will take it. An unfortunate misfire. Just this year, the ball straight out of bounds. The Kerr's checked in for Chicago. The Supersonics also with the sub. Perkins is checked in. Fourth quarter of play and over three and a half minutes have gone by to the inside. And the shot's good from Bushler. That's a heads up play by Kerr. Finding the open man and getting him the ball on time and on target. Well done. Pass to Snow. Here's Askew. Kicks to Perkins. Pass to Snow. Perkins with the screen. Shot clock at three. Launches a three. The putback. Here's Brakowski. And Jordan sends it back. Out of bounds. Supersonic's ball. As Snow keeps possession. A sensational block that definitely deserves another look. Reads the play well there and gets himself in the air at just the right time. Terrific denial. Forty six seconds left in the game. Perkins the pass to Snow. It's stolen by Curl. Perkins against Kukoc. And the Bulls pack on two more. That should put a stamp on this one. Great way to close out a victory. To the middle. Here's Perkins. And finished off by Perkins. He's a fantastic facilitator. He could virtually run a team in his sleep. And here's Jordan. He'll bring it up for the Bulls. Three-second difference between shot clock and game clock. Here's Bushler. And a great assist by Kukoc as that one goes in. They're starting to idle down and settle in. Much better shot selection this half. Yeah, they're showing great patience at the offensive end. Snow the pass to Perkins. Over Kukoc. No good from Perkins. And the Chicago Bulls have done it. 72 wins in the NBA championship. The greatest season in NBA history. To win it all in front of their home fans, it makes this special. This team has gone through so much. But this win solidifies this Bulls team's place in NBA history, don't you think? I agree, and I think they very well could be the best team ever. Maybe the best we've ever seen, this 96 Bulls team. And Michael Jordan, his fourth title. MJ is in the conversation for greatest player of all time. Jordan, Pippen, Rodman, all future Hall of Famers. Boy, if a picture is worth a thousand words, what more can you say? You can just see the emotion and what this moment means to Michael Jordan. Congratulations.